So I took off and I ran from police. I ran, I ran, I ran, I ran, I ran. I came out my clothes. I put that nick. I ended up in this white man pit, a uh, um, fire pit. And he called the police on me and the police came and came and locked my ass up. How long was you locked up for? So about three, four days. Three, four days? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. I mean, that's a hell of a story. But it's a uh, real window. No, it sounds real. No. It sounds real, but I definitely have questions. What is it that has caused you to go from being a church girl to prostituting and doing drugs? Pain. Where's that pain coming from? Abandonment from family. I can't find my family. I just want to go home. Can and you say you me? was running with your kids? At first I was. Until so the police came. I, I left them on more than they went to when they got Swear to God. You left them on Moreland? I don't want to be out here, bro. Mm. What's up, YouTube? Make sure that you click the notification bell. We're going to be going live in 2024, doing live interviews. And I want to make sure you catch it in the moment. So make sure you tap that notification bell. Now back to the content. What's up, YouTube? Atlanta Street Interviews out here with another one. So we got a young lady with us today. How you doing today, miss? I'm doing fine. All right, all right. So are you homeless? No. Okay, so what's your deal? I have been homeless though. Okay. What's your situation like right now? I'm staying with my father, who uh, a, a wreck. Okay. Mental wreck. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So how long have you been staying there? About a year. About a year? Okay. And so what was it that happened a year ago that had to, you know caused you to have to go stay with him? Uh I got locked up. For what? Cause I ran from some people who were sex trafficking. What? Yeah. How old are you? I'm 32. 32? So wait. wait. Okay. Um. Wow. So how did you end up getting arrested for running away from sex traffickers? Because I end up being in the back of somebody's yard and they called the police. So what happened? Like, tell me what happened. Like, why it's so deep? You it love is, deep stories. It it, it 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 happened out of nowhere. Um, I was hanging with this boy. I was at somebody's house. I got introduced to this lady. He said with his girlfriend, but I was he was he was abusing her like he was verbally abusing her. And I was trying to stay out of their business, but I ended up being quiet and stopped speaking and just stopped paying attention to the lady more. Right. So I thought he was being on her. So I ended up staying with her to make sure he wouldn't hit her or nothing like that. But it got deep in the dragon hole. Right, like literally, right there while I'm in the living room. Like y'all drag the from one room to the bathroom. Well, how did you end up in the sex traffic though? Because a, a, the boy who I was with was actually being sex trafficked. And he ended up telling me, I heard a bump. I was going out the door and I heard somebody bump, boom. And he said she tired of being put to sheep. So he actually gave me knowledge of what was going on. So by me having that knowledge, they wanted my head. They wanted his head. How, how long was you in that? You know, sex traffic. Uh, oh, I wasn't getting sex traffic. They couldn't get me. Okay, so you're saying that they tried to get yeah, you. Yeah, they tried. And so you say you ran away. I ran. And you ended up at somebody else's yard. Yep, I butt ass nigga. I took off all my clothes. I was, I, I was nigga. Everywhere I was running, I kept hearing a horn beep. You know, sex traffic. They don't. They, they move. It's organized. So when, when you're running from them or they trying to get you, it's, it's, it's a, it's a communication that they like. By me running down this street right now, if I was to hit that left right there, and somebody see me, they're going to they gonna beat the horn to let them know she right here. If I run over here, I'm telling you, it's so many other motherfuckers. Hmm. Okay, so hold on. So let's, let's, um, all right, so real quick. So do you have any kids? I have two boys. Okay, how? Um, 11 and 8. 11 and 8. They was and with so, me. <coughs> they was with you? Yeah, they was with me. I went and got my kids. I was scared. I went and got my kids. They was with you after you ran away or before? I was running with them. Then the police came. The boy tried to stick a pill in my mouth. I spit it out. I was running down the street. Police came. But I'm thinking, feminist the police. So you would think the police would be there to protect and serve. No, they was with that shit too. They walked up to my kids and asked, is your mama on any type of pill? And I did like, damn, how you gonna ask my children that? How you know I'm on a pill? Who told you that? And it, it gave me my red flag to get the fuck on. So I took off and I ran from the police. I ran, I ran, I ran, I ran, I ran. I came out my clothes. I put that nick. I ended up in this white man pit, a uh, um, fire pit. And he called the police on me. And the police the came and came and locked my ass up. How long was you locked up for? So about three, four days. Three, four days? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. 
I mean, that's a hell of a story. But it's a uh, real window. No, it sounds real. No. It sounds real, but I definitely have questions. What's the question? Um, so, okay, first and foremost, so uh, the kids now, uh, who do they live with? They live with me. Okay, so they're living with you at your dad's house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so have you ever been married? No. No? Okay. So we're gonna, I'm going to jump back into that, but just real quick, let's just start from the beginning. So where are you from? I'm from the east side. <laughs> you from the east side. Throw them E's up, man. Zone 6. Shout it out, man. But what is happening, though, is on Moreland and Moreland Moreland? Yeah, yeah, little Glock block. That's East Atlanta, yeah, that's East Atlanta. Yeah, them that's... little, that, that little area over there, people, them little houses and shit, that shit real serious over there. You talking about, you talking about our color Moreland or their color Moreland? Shit, all of the white people in it too, they got their heads in it bigger than the black folks. Right, you know? I just, I was, okay, just figuring out what part of Moreland, but okay. So bottom line, you're from the East Side. Um, and so growing up on the east side, did you have both mom and dad in the household? Yeah, no, I just had my mom. Just mom? Mm -hmm. And so where was dad at that time? Was he <laughs> was street. he like active and present in your life? Mm -mm. No, so wasn't really there a whole lot? Okay, do you have brothers and sisters? I got two brothers and two sisters. And so where are you in the birth order? The oldest, the I'm youngest? The second oldest. Second oldest? Okay. And so, you know, growing up on the east side, uh, would you say that you had, you know, like a fairly normal childhood? Hell no, I ain't have a no. Didn't. Tell me about it. I grew up, um, it was different because my mama smoked dope. She wasn't a bad mama, but at the same time, she lacked a lot of a lot of shit. I get it. So then she ended up getting caught up in it like she had. So she was on the dope, so what was childhood like? Was it? Childhood was like, I got to take care of myself. That was just what it was. I just grew up fast, real fast. So, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and ask, right? I mean, you know, when you was growing up, did anything like ever happen to you or anything like that? Shit, defects. I ain't never been molested. I ain't never been. What age did defects come and get you? Like 12. 12? What was the reasoning? Was it like an incident that happened or was it just? My mom was smoking dope with my little sister. She was what? Smoking dope with my little sister. With her? Yeah, so when she had, you know, they get the kids a drug test. My little sister okay, tested she positive came out. cocaine. Ooh. So she took all, they took all the kids? They just took me and my little sister. Yeah, little sister, okay. Yeah, but they, took, yeah, they got all our heads though, for real though. Oh, okay, okay. Um, all right. So, so I mean, did you end up going like to high school and stuff like that? I went to high school. Okay, um, yeah, did you graduate? No? What, uh, what was the highest grade you got to? Ninth. Ninth? Why'd you drop out of ninth? I don't know. I, I, I was staying with my auntie, but you know, it was, it was like, when you stand with somebody and you're not somebody's kids, that you're not treated like nobody's kids. So it was always mistreatment for me. Cause my Kinda mama like, smoked dope, so I was underneath people. So it was always a mistreat. Like I was just being, I don't know, like them hoes were just some haters, to be honest. Hmm. Cause I was focused. Cause I know I had two little sisters I had to take care of. So I was focused. So I, I mean, to, when you dropped out of ninth grade, what did your day consist of mostly? Like during the times when you would have been in school. I was just sitting around doing shit with my life. And then I got bored of that. Then I tried to go back to school. I tried to get my best friend mom to put me back in school. She tried, but she couldn't because she won my legal guardian. So I called my mama who was in Savannah at the time. She's supposed to came on. She didn't. Then next thing I know, I was locked up. Next thing you know, you was locked up? All uh, robbery. Cab, two years. Three, really. Ooh. So were you like trying to rob like a uh, business or a person? Hell no. Nah, I put the phone even nobody. I don't even know what happened. <laughs> well, I mean, allegedly. Because you already served your time Man, anyway. I, guess, so. I was trying to help some little, some little girls. Right, that's... Wait, wait, you was trying to help some little girls? Yeah, what, what I happened? got into it with these boys about some little girls that I felt like they shouldn't have had. They were too old for them. But how did that turn into armed robbery? Because he came back. He said we robbed him, but I ain't robbed him, though. Okay. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and ask, right? Has there ever been, like, any mental illness diagnosis Hell, or anything no, like, like that? I think the other Okay, so there's never been any type of anything like that. Okay. Because I mean, you know, I guess I guess you can understand, right? If you was that white guy whose uh, fire pit you was in, you know, if you walked outside and saw somebody naked But and, he was still genuine though. Like he was a, like be honest with you, he was still nice about it because I was butt naked, he went in the house and got me a nice ass blanket and all of it. Like he didn't mean to treat me no nothing that he actually listened to me. Right, I guess the question is like what was it that caused you to decide to get butt naked? in that situation. My pants got wet and I felt like something was on my clothes. I felt like it was something about my clothes. I felt like something was on my clothes. Okay, okay. So you felt like something was kind of on you? Yeah, like a bug. 
like a truck or something. Cause there ain't no fucking way I run too good. I ran all ran from the police too much. So if I'm ducking the dodge, it ain't no way these folks can. And can you say you me. was running with your kids? At first I was. Until the police came, I, I left them on Moreland. They went to when they got swear to God. You left them on Moreland? Well, I got the fuck on quick. Move. <laughs> <laughs> but Wait. if I would have stayed there, if I would have actually stayed there, I had, it's it's a it's a god. You feel me? And, and the way I felt at that moment, God didn't want me to sit right there and let this let them police officers arrest me. He told I knew my kids was all right. They was on Moreland. They was with their aunt, they were with their cousin who had a phone. I knew nobody wasn't gonna fuck them kids right there on Moreland Avenue. That's why I was able to leave my kids. But I wasn't finna let these folks lock me up. Well, some people, are, you know, some people are gonna hear this story. They're gonna say, "Well, there's a lot of people that gonna hear this story and can't speak up and can't say the truth for what's going on." There's a lot of people being sex trafficked right in front of our face, and people don't even know the shit because they can't speak up and speak out. So, so try to help us to identify sex traffickers. Yeah, you know, it's hard to identify because they look like regular people. I was around these folks all the time, and this shit was in my face, and I never knew this. Hmm. You have people who look like these folks, like they look like this person right here is walking with what he got on, but get what this person could be a real sex shop. He could be in that shit. That's how they look. They don't look, they look. It's deep, it's organized, and it's serious, and it's real, and it's right here. And and so you're saying they was definitely trying to sex traffic you? They were trying to kill me. They weren't even finna sex traffic me, they finna knock me out. This gonna knock you off? Yeah, they finna knock me Why? in the block because what I knew, I, I know about, I know what's going on. You think they want me to walk around and knowing this knowledge? Hell no, they don't. They want me gone. Mm. Okay. The person who told me they want him, they wanted him gone. We had okay. until five o'clock. I had five fuck a five. I was doing everything until five. When five hit, I still didn't give a fuck about five. Okay. Well, I mean, you understand where some people are gonna hear this story and they're gonna say, well. Sounds like she might have some mental stuff going on. Fuck them. They can say what they want to say. That's on them. Okay. Okay. Um, as far as your dad goes, um, what does he think about all that? Like, what did, what did he think when you had to, you know, when go I told to... him what was going on? Yeah. My dad, he, he know that shit real. Okay. So what's what's you guys' situation like now? What's y'all's? Well, one thing I know about my daddy and my brother now, I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Them folk not finna let nobody fuck with. So coming my way or doing anything, that shit just like bad for him, real bad. So you were saying that growing up, he wasn't really there a whole lot. He wanted, when did he kind of get more he active? He started coming in my life now. Now? Yeah, like a year ago. Growing up, what do you think? What effect do you think the absence of his presence um, had on you growing up? I I ain't miss him because I had a gun. So his absence was never missed. Were you happy when he kind of started getting back in your life? I still feel the same way. Have you ever told him how you feel? Yeah, I don't talk to him. I ask him. I don't talk to him, but I don't judge him. I ain't mad at him because he left him for whatever his reasons is. This, you feel me? I mean, have you asked what his reasons are? Like, have you asked, yeah, like, how to deal with my mama. He said he what? It was my mama. But I don't feel like that's no excuse because no man should leave that child regardless. I'm bitch, like, nobody can't separate that. Is still, your mom still alive? Yeah, that bitch still alive. That whole week. What's you guys' relationship like now? I beat her up. Is she still um in her addiction or whatever? Yeah, she's still in that shit evil and turn people wicked. Yeah, that um, you know, that 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 crack is a that's a man, that is that's a different drug. Man. It is. It it, a, it 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 is just devastated. It's personal though. Yeah. There's a lot of people who smoke dope that ain't wicked. It's a lot of people that, that smoke dope that are good people. It well, there's a, definitely a lot of functional um addicts out here, but yeah. A lot of people, man, they, they just go down the worst path when all crack. They do, but get what? It's the ones who really don't have. Like the, 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 the people who really sleep outside and really limited to everything, bro. Them need yeah. the most kind hearted people. I sit downtown and I watch the, 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 the I watch the homeless folk, the, the, the people who smoke the, smoke the straight shooter out there. Them the most kind hearted people I have ever met in my fucking life. Yeah, they do, they do tend to be. <clears throat> Kind and humble and that type of stuff. Nah, I will say that. But they crazy. They'll get you, they'll get at you. But it's just the situation you in at that time, and if, and they know this shit. So they still, even though they don't have no food or they don't have it, they still offer. 
Or they still try to give, or they still, it, it's, a, it's it deep though. It's real deep out here, it's deep. It's deep for me though. I feel different from anybody else. Like, it's, it's, it's like my sight and what I had to go through, it was different. Okay. That's why nothing is mentally wrong with me. I've always been mentally strong. Okay. So as far as like, so, you know, um, you're, you're, cause you're from here, right? Yeah, I'm from here. Right. So, you know, um, what do you think people's thoughts and reactions are going to be if they happen to come across this video on YouTube and they see you and they recognize you? What do you think their thoughts and their reactions are going to be? They know I'm the truth. They know what I'm saying. They know I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a always speak my truth. I don't give a fuck. And look towards me real quick. That's what I do. <laughs> you feel me? Like I speak my truth. Okay. So they know they're going to be like, yeah, that's just her. <laughs> yeah, they know me. Okay. No worries. No worries. All right, well, listen, miss, we really appreciate you taking the time answering all of our questions. Um, if anybody out there wanted to reach out, help, or donate, do you have a way they could do that? Do you have social media, cash app, anything like that? So me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a cash app. Right. Shout it out. What's your cash app? What is my cash app? Oh, uh, Ole Dumari, daughter. <laughs> okay. You're going to have to spell that. <laughs> okay, it's E-5. That is O-L-O-D-U-M-A-R, daughter. D-A-U-G-H-T-E-R. Okay. All right. Any uh, Instagram or Facebook or I'm anything like Instagram that? Instagram or Facebook. All that right. shit for the birds. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, we really appreciate you, like I say. And definitely wish you nothing but the best. Are you checking to make sure that's it? Yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I do need y'all. What a donation. Yeah, come on with a donation. <laughs> oh, we're going to get that cup poppy, y'all. <laughs> yeah, let's just make sure, right? We don't want you to miss out on Let any me. potential. <laughs> let's see. Uh, Olo Dumari daughter. Okay. Okay. So your, your dad is African? Nah, my dad, nah, nah, my daddy is uh, black as fuck. Okay. They don't know nothing about nothing. It's, <laughs> it's a spirit, it's just spiritual for me. Okay. They ain't know nothing. I can dig it. But I do need everybody to know God is real and don't think he ain't. There you go. Oh, they ain't mad at it. For real, like it's that real shit. Well, listen, miss, we really appreciate you, like I say. I'm a mister. I can play. <laughs> I was about to say, hold on now. This is, we, you know, in Atlanta, do play. not play like I that. Okay? Play, I can play. It is a lot of <laughs> I'm for real. This shit deep. All right, well, listen, like I say, we appreciate you. Definitely wish you nothing but the best, all right? Yes. Make sure you have a good one, sweetie. You too, baby. What's up, YouTube? Atlanta Street Interviews out here with another one. So we got a young lady with us today. How you doing today, miss? Hey. All right, all right. So are you homeless? Yeah. Okay, and so how old are you? 42. 42? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so how long have you been homeless? Two years when I lost my check. Okay, was that like your Social Security check? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, how long have you been getting the check for? Since I was 18. Since you was 18? What was it that happened two years ago that caused you to lose your check? Um, I went mental health and I tried to hurt someone because I wasn't on my meds. Who'd you try to hurt? Uh, someone that Zane Woods has in Albany, Georgia. Okay, so you was living at like a group home type deal? No, I was still, um, I was hanging in the streets and I was hanging at someone's house. Okay. So I you just was... got out of jail. Okay, so you did two years jail in jail. For trying to kill some, her, hurt someone for not being on my meds. Huh. Okay, the person that you tried to kill, were you related to them or anything? No, or? I, didn't, I didn't know who it was. You didn't know who it was? No, I, I was hearing voices. You was hearing voices? Did you actually end up harming that person? No. Okay, but you Thank tried God. to. Yeah. Huh, wow, okay, okay. Okay, all right, well, yeah, we're going to tap into that. So, do you have any kids? Yeah, I have a 14-year-old, um, Jeremiah, and um, a 3-year-old. A 3-year-old? Yeah. Wow, who do the 14 and the 3-year-old live with? Foster care. Foster care? I lost my children because of mental health, and the second child I lost because of drugs and mental health. Okay, what drugs are we talking about? Um, hard and on uh, ice. Okay, so crack and meth. Okay, um, at what age did we start doing crack? Uh, I've only been on drugs for two years, so. Two years? Yeah. What made you start crack at 40? Um, hanging out with the wrong boyfriends and the wrong crowd. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, um, the boyfriend that you was with, is that the same dad to your three-year-old? No. No? Uh, the dads that you have, uh, were you in relationships with them, or were, you, were they just kind of sexual partners? The dads, they're relationship. Okay, so the 14-year-old dad and the three-year-old dad, those are both relationships? Yeah. Okay. Um, which one was the longest relationship? Uh, it didn't last long, about six months each. Six months? My relationships don't last long because they can't handle my mental health. Okay, what is the mental uh, health diagnosis anyway? Schizophrenia and bipolar and emotional disorder and personality disorder. Wow, okay. And that was diagnosed at 18? 15. 15? It took three years for you to get the 
for them to actually get it? Because you say you've been on it since 18. Yeah, but I've actually been on mental health meds since I was six. Since you were six? Redlin. Ooh. I was actually a doctor from Panama and brought over to America when I was five. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for my biological parents from Panama. And I don't know if they're from Panama, Mexico, or Colombia. I'm looking for them. I have My parent was part of the cult they were trying to get out of. Huh. Okay. My doctor okay. parents. Wow. Okay. Jim and Stacy Franks. And Are they still I living? Don't, I don't know. I can't find them either. Okay. Well, were they here in Georgia? Uh, yeah, they were here in Georgia, Columbus, Georgia. Columbus? Okay. My dad worked at Fort Benning, and he's a, a retired veteran. Okay. Have you ever been married? No. No? Okay. Let's just start from the beginning. So, where are you from? Panama, Central America. Okay. Hey, man. I think this is our first person from Panama, man. So, <laughs> shout out that Panama, man. <laughs> shout it out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. My uh, my grandfather is actually from Antigua, which is a Caribbean yeah. island that's close to uh, South America and everything else. So. All right. So, as far as it goes, um, it sounds like you... Left Panama when you was about five or so? Mm -hmm. Okay, what caused you to have to leave again? I don't know. I found out I could have been missing So when I was five. I don't know no, the real story. Everything's a lie growing up, I found out. So what was the story that you was told when you was growing up? That I was adopted, but I found out as a grown person, a 40-year-old person, that I could have been missing, stolen. That the people who you think adopted you could have actually kidnapped you? I don't know. I think they were told to, though, by a, a higher power. Were they black, white, or what white. race were they? They were white? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you was raised by a white couple, and that was here in Georgia? Uh-huh. Okay, in Columbus? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, did you have brothers and sisters? Yeah, I had an adopted brother and foster kids. Okay. Foster sisters and brothers. How many? Um, my parents, adopted parents had got some foster kids, Kim McPherson and, and Hannah Lena Franks, an Asian and a white girl, and um, my brother adopted. My, my, I found out my adopted brother was actually my real brother, and I didn't know it growing up mm, okay you know the secrets in the family i get it i get it um so as far as childhood goes i mean you know would you say that you had like a fairly normal childhood i thought it was normal normal but um i had child molestation go on wait but I, I, didn't, I didn't remember that happening until i went to jail and i remember everything happened on me wow so you I didn't, you didn't forget wow so you didn't remember it like you didn't have it as an actual memory um until you until it got triggered again in jail yeah what age did the molestation start um sex trafficking from two to seven and sex trafficking at 33 but i escaped so from two to seven how do you remember that though at the age of two no i remember that in jail i forgot it happened to me okay um two to seven so because it, it sounds like you came up to the states at, at around five or six right so you were still being trafficked? No, I was adopted. I was came to the States when I was two, I mean. Two? Yeah, that's what Okay, I mean. okay. Yeah, I forgot. And so you say that you were sex trafficked from two to seven? Yeah. By who? I don't want to say, because he's not the same person. He's a good person now. Okay. Was and it he someone saved that lives you was, now. Was it someone that you was related to? Um, My dad's uncle. Okay. And so he sex trafficked you from two to seven? Yeah, my parents. But it was part of the cult. Okay, you're talking about your white parents, right? Yeah. Okay. But I had to find out my mother's actually Creole. She's kind of black. She thought okay. she was white, and then everything was a lie. They said I wasn't black. Everything was a lie. So there's okay. a lot of lies in the family. Okay. Um. Okay, okay. Were you the only person in the house that was getting a check, or were there other people in the house getting a uh, check? Nobody got a check. Everybody worked. But they're, they're, they should deserve a check because the things they went through with their mental health, and they're crazy, too. But they worked. Okay. I tried to um, go to school and get my... I was just trying to get a green card. I still had to get a renewed for green card within six months. And trying to get an identity. You had to have an identity to get a job and go to school. And I actually wanted to go to college. Huh. Did you end up graduating high school? No. My parents took me out of school in seventh grade. I don't know why. They said I couldn't go to school no more for some was reason. Were there any, like, behavioral problems or anything like that? Um, schizophrenia. So were you, was the schizophrenia resulting in you doing anything? Like, um, you know, just violent any, behaviors. Violent, okay. Well, that's, that's Talk crazy, why. talking to myself. Okay. They said people in school couldn't handle me talking to myself. Okay, okay. I take my meds now. Okay, yeah, yeah, I mean, 
Okay, um, you say that you were sex trafficked at 33? Yeah, they tried to, but I escaped, so it didn't work. What happened? I escaped. I just walked out the door and helped two other girls escape. Well, I mean, how? They didn't, like, have you? They didn't have, like, guns or anything uh -huh, like that? No, or? no, no, no. So what do you mean they tried to sex traffic you? How I do know you... a man took me to a house. was 24 men in the house, and, I, and he wanted me to do stuff. And um, I wouldn't do it, so he got mad, and he put me in a room. He took the mat out of the room and boarded up the window and went and feed me. How long was you there for? Just for um, a couple of days, but I ended up escaping. I ran away. When the wife wasn't looking around and she was talking to somebody, I had my opportunity to leave. And I walked through the woods of Fort Benning, and we went to Journey Recovery to hide out. The um, police helped us. Did they end up busting them? Uh, the I think they did five years for somebody else, child, for child molestation for somebody else. Huh. Okay, okay. Um, and that was before the drugs? Yeah, that's before the drugs. How did you end up with that person? Like, how did you end um, up at that house? Or I'm Horizon New Horizon put me there for a um, personal care home. I thought it was a personal care home. What was it? <laughs> I, I don't know what it was. I mean, they just dropped me off there, and I went inside, and they took me in. They said that was my home. But why did you feel like they was trying to sex traffic you? I don't know. It's, it's a long story. I don't want to talk about it no more. It's just complicated. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Because he took me to a room with, with all these men going on. Were they also, like, mental health and stuff like that? Yeah, there was mental health women they took in. Okay. Okay, we'll we'll leave it there. Yeah. So, all right, so how long you been out here? How long you been out here on the streets? Um, out here in Atlanta? Since 2020. Uh, Atlanta? Yeah, in Atlanta. Oh, uh, about two or three months. Two or three months? Well, what made you come out here in the first place? Looking for my family, my blood family. Have you been able to locate them? No, I can't find them. I don't know how to find them. And so, do you know what their names are or anything like um, that? Martinez. Martinez? The last name of Martinez. Well, that's not gonna. That's not. It's not gonna win well, My boss called Ferizmia Martinez. You say what? Ferizmia Martinez. I don't know how to say it right. Ferez. Ferizmia Martinez. Okay, what's going on, man? You still out here, man? Yeah. All right, man. I'll be gone soon. Be gone soon. Yeah. All right, man. It's been good to see. Been, been a long time, man. Almost two years now. Yeah, man. All right, man. So I can't find her. I had to look her up on the internet. I don't know how to do all that. I had to get somebody to help me. Hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, all right. And so at this point, um, what are we doing to try to get ourselves out of this position of homelessness? I'm working with Central Church as a case manager. She's taking me to help or something. Or the pathways to help me get my green card and ID and get into housing and all that stuff. And I might have to go to rehab for a little while. Okay, She's are you still me. actively in your addiction right now? Um, yeah, to be honest, Okay, yeah. so you still kind of, I get it, I get it. Um, as far as I the addiction. I live under the bridge in a tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm familiar, yeah. familiar with uh, with how the living conditions are. Right. Um, as far as it goes, being in your addiction right now, like, are you, you know, like, do people try to, you know, get you to do sex for money and stuff like that? No, they don't, they don't make me do nothing. I do it on my own, to be honest, you know. I'm just being real, you know. Ain't, no, ain't nobody that, you know, do nothing. Okay. I do it for the drugs and the money. And so, I mean, how much do they, money do they give you for that? I don't know. I want to talk about it, <laughs> that part. Well, remember I said, if there's it's anything you're embarrassed to talk about, I'll start the interview. Right, remember I said if there's anything. Very low is $10, and maybe high is 80 or 100 That's The, re the reason why I asked that question is, you know, so that people could just say it out loud, so they could hear yeah. themselves, you know, and maybe it'll cause a little bit of shame. And, yeah. you know, it's once, shameful. You're right, right, right. Yeah. And so. You get desperate for a hit or, or money. That's all. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so. The drugs kind of take you down, take your beauty away anyway, so, you know, you don't really feel like you're worth as All much that, as what yeah. you, yeah, you know, I got, yeah, that sucks, man. Um, you know, how did your boyfriend convince you to start doing it? Um, I don't know. I wanted to, I told him I wanted to um, make some money because the check wasn't enough. I had to pay him rent at a born home, and he got, he got me to taught me how to prostitute, and he taught me how to do crack, and I didn't, I wanted to do drugs, I guess. Why? To be accepted, I guess, because I never was really out there. I was always sheltered all my life. Mm. I really know much about life. They call me a greenie. Mm. Yeah. They know huh. much about life. And so that made you run to the crack? No, I just wanted to see what it was like to be in the crowd. I get it. Because I, I was always in the school books and stuff, and going to the library, 
kind of like to myself like a nerd. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, just wanted to see what it's like. So, what has that experience been like? Do you regret it? I regret it. And I regret smoking cigarettes. Now I got COPD. Mm. And I'm spitting out mucus all the time and coughing. Mm. I regret all the things I did trying to fit in. Are you at an older with... age. And usually people do that. You're young. But yeah, I was about to like say, I said, 40, I was young, that's I was, like... I was sheltered. I couldn't go nowhere. My parents took me out of school. So I was curious about life. Even so, the, the, the guys that you had as boyfriends, because, I mean, if you were sheltered, how'd you end up, you know, with boyfriends? Um, I ran like away from a group home for that was with 23 years in personal care homes. I ran away and went to the streets because I didn't want to be sheltered no more. And I went buck wild. What does buck wild mean? What was, give Just me an example. of clubbing and getting into trouble and stuff and being promiscuous. I could imagine that, you know, in your 20s and, Stuff like that. You yeah, was probably I was shelter too. In and 20s. we was probably a really like just pretty lady. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you know, you got the the fine hair. You probably had some features that that the guys liked and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I get it. I get it. Man, I tell you what, boy, the effects of being sheltered can definitely be this kind of wild, you know, side on the other side of yeah. it. You know, um, so I try to balance it out with my kids. Cause I was always a church girl too on the side. Mm. I love Jesus Christ. And God the Father. You know, when you were sitting up in church back back when, you know, did you ever picture yourself out here on the streets kind of, you know, having done some of the stuff that you've no. done? Right? What are your thoughts on that now that you've now that you've moved to this point of life and you was there, what are your thoughts on this now? I never thought I'd be a prostitute or do drugs. What do you think has what do you what what is it if you could just kind of summarize it what is it that has caused you to go from being a church girl to prostituting and doing drugs pain where's that pain coming from abandonment for family i can't find my family i just want to go home home meaning panama home meaning columbus georgia um uh -huh. my other country and see my blood family and my adopted and my kids I don't want to be out here, it's rough. Mm. Mm. It's not me. And I always want to be a minister. Like Joyce Meyer. Mm. And help the homeless too. So, what are we doing, like I say, to try to get ourselves out of this I'm position? working with a case manager, Lily oh, yeah, you King said at, at Central Church. Mm -hmm. She's helping me. She's trying to find a rehab. I've been trying to find rehabs, but just got back on my Medicaid, and so it's just an identity issue. So I'm still looking for rehabs. Okay. I get it. I get it. Well, listen, miss. And being um, dual diagnosed is kind of hard. You say what? Being dual diagnosed. My mental health status is more than my drug problem. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I can get I can yeah, I can imagine. Can All right, well listen, miss, if anybody out there wanted to reach out, help or donate, do you have a way they could do that? Do you have social media, cash app, anything like that? What? Um, if anybody wanted to reach out to you or help or donate, do you um, have a way that they could do that? Do you have like cash 40, app? Forty four OG Magnum. What's that? It's my friend's cash app, it's not mine. I ain't got friends. no phone. You got no phone? Okay. Um, you don't have, you know, Facebook and Instagram or nothing like I that? I got Facebook and Instagram. What's your Facebook? Um, M-A-Y-G-H-A-N, Megan Franks. M-A-Y-J? M-A-Y-G-H, no, M-A-Y-G-H-A-N. Okay. Megan Franks. Megan Franks. And what about your Instagram? Uh, same thing. Same thing? Okay. And a TikTok. Okay. And a TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I like TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at it. All right, well, listen, miss, we really appreciate you, like all I right. say, taking the time, asking all of our questions. Mm -hmm. If anybody, um, oh, uh, like, let me do that again. <laughs> all right, miss, like I say, we really appreciate you taking the time, asking all of our questions, mm -hmm. and we definitely wish you nothing but the best out here, all right? All right. Make sure you have a good but one, But you sweetie. can use this cash up on 40, um, OG44 Madden, or it's 44 OG Madden, it's one of them. What's their name? Um... I call him Big G. He's just a friend. Okay, so I'll look it up. But all right, all right you make sure you have a good one, sweetie. All right, sweetie. you too, you sir. All right. <laughs> okay, okay. Bye bye.